What's up guys, welcome to another video. And today, also pardon the mess, we're still in the process of moving. But today I wanna do a video, um, basically uh, in a way to combat the people who are like, well, you're not fluent because you don't know 100% of the words. Now, first and foremost, I generally don't use that F word ever. Uh, in language learning. It's got such a negative intonation on it. I don't hate people that use it. I just personally don't use it because you're just asking for a can of worms to be open and that's not what I want to do. But what I'm going to do is I want to start a series of uh, English words that not even English speakers know just to prove a point. I'm a native English speaker and I found a list of a bunch of words that I've never heard of and hopefully you guys enjoy this. Also, just to say this right off the bat, uh, I'm starting at number two because I actually did hear of number, I have heard of number one. Number one was Archmage, which was super weird. Uh, and if you've ever played a video game ever, uh, you've probably heard of that. But this is, this is not like a new list. I will definitely cite my sources here. This is from grammarcheck.net and it is an article from 2013 entitled 20 ridiculous sound, ridiculous sounding English words you've never heard before. So again, as a native English speaker, this shows that I am not 100% fluent as well. Benimpt from 1580. Okay, some of these are probably going to be old, I'm sure. How fabulous. Benimpt is the past tense of bename, benami, bename, bename, I guess, uh, which means exactly what it suggests. It does and bequeaths somebody a name. You can just imagine someone's mom saying, No, you can't call yourself Jazzy Jizz Fiddle. I benept you, David Carter. Fair enough. Canker fret from 1618, is a rather difficult way to say that something is corroding thanks to a healthy dose of rust, but it can also rather charmingly describe a blister in the mouth or something that is being eaten away by gangrene. So it's, I guess, I'm assuming that's probably uh, what canker sore derived from, but I've definitely never heard the word canker fret. Cogly. <laughs> okay, that just makes me laugh. Cogly from 1695. A coggle, <laughs> a coggle is a small rounded stone that has been worn smooth by water. Therefore, cogly naturally means something that is shaken and unsteady when stepped on. A splendid pair of ridiculous English words, don't you think? So, like, I'm assuming, like, if you were to go on a hike and, like, you're walking over the uh, rocks that are, like, kind of like before the waterfall hits or something like that. Like if you're going on like a hike with water, I'm assuming that like the rocks there are cogly. I'm gonna bring that word back. I like that word. Fanfaronade from 1652. Fanfaronade describes a boisterous or arrogant language. So someone who brags or is ostentatious in their use of English words or any other words could be described as loud, brash, or prone to fanfaronading. Fanfare is uh, extrapolated from this and was first used about a century later. Okay, yeah, I've, I've never heard of that, but I guess it makes sense. Um, I guess there's a lot of words that describe that same thing, uh, but okay, yeah, I've, I've never heard that word. Fribble, okay. Fribble is another word that we uh, really ought to rescue from obscurity. It means that, uh, it means to falter or stammer, but more pertinently than either of these, from 1709, it came to mean tottering when walking. Therefore, when reviewing Lady Gaga's latest wardrobe ensemble, we can suggest that she fribbled down the street away from the paparazzi in her impossibly high shoes. A fribbler can be described as someone who acts aimlessly or feebly. Okay, yeah, I kind of like that word too, so I need, to, I need to bring back, my goal is to bring back cogly and fribble. I like those so far, those are my favorites. Jingly form, gingly form. I guess this is another problem in English is you don't 100% know which version of like, which sound the G makes or something like that. But anyway, uh, this is, okay. Uh, this is an pretty, I assume that should be, this is a pretty ridiculous sounding word, which means hen shaped. Jingly, I'm, I'm going with, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with gingly. Uh, gingly mo, gingly moidal. This is killing me. Gingly moidal, which is arguably even more ridiculous, means to resemble a hinge. Okay, so I guess like uh, if you're opening your door and the thing that it hits, sits on, those are gingly moidal. High-low. High-low is in 19th century fashion terminology for footwear that neither reached high up the leg nor sat below the ankle. The high-low was laced boot that re was a laced boot. Uh, that reached above the ankle, but it didn't rise as high as a boot. Okay, um, 
I'm not saying I've heard of that, but I think that may be referenced if you watch movies from, like, set forth in that time. So I'm not going to count that one just yet. Um, okay. Licorice. This is my favorite word on the list. It means something that is pleasing to the palate, something sweet, pleasant, and delicious. It also came to describe the eager, eagerly desirous, longing, greedy desire within all of us. From 1653, it describes someone who is lecherous, lustful, and and wanton? What? Okay, so it can have good or bad connotations, I guess. But I like the idea of that. I love the idea of being like, man, this candy bar is licorice. That's one I could bring back to. Fribble and Cogley are still my favorites, but I like that one. Memothrept. Mammothrept. In the 16th century, a mammothrept was a spoilt child. This has to be one of the best, albeit ridiculously sounding, English words ever. Surely this is due for resurrection. Amen. Uh, because as we all know, the 21st century has more than its fair share of mammothrips. Thrips. Thrips. Yeah, okay. I can get behind that. We definitely need to have a resurgence of that word as well. Noodle. Okay, now I've heard of noodle, but I'm anxious to see what this says. Of course you've heard of noodle. Okay. Uh, and you've probably eaten them too. Noodles as we know them are made from wheat, flour, and eggs and are served in a soup or in Chinese or Asian food. However, or pasta, right? Italian as well. And probably literally every other country, but okay. Uh, however, much more interesting is the old 1753 use of the term, now largely obscure to describe a simpleton. Okay, try this. Mr. Mammothrept, who I benept David Carter, is both a noodle and a fribbler. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, this is amazing. Mr. Mammothrept, who I've been up, David Carter, is both a noodle and a fribbler, and that, by all technicality, should make sense. That is amazing. And I'm going to do one more here. This is number 12, which still leaves eight on the list, but I'm going to keep this up. I'll do this as a series. I'll do another one of these as well, um, but I just want to kind of keep them a little bit short as well. But the technically, this is the 10th one. This is number 12 on the list, but two I already knew or kind of had heard of. Um, Profluvium, okay? Proflu, proflu, I can't even pronounce it. Profluvium is not the most charming word to use in conversation. It means flowing forth a copious flow or discharge. As in, I had a bad cold. There was quite a profluvium from my nasal passages. Yuck. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, it's, it's gross and stuff like that. However, there needs to be a word like that currently in the English language. Like... Because most of the time, if you, like, sneeze or something, like, no, I mean, you describe it as a sneeze, and you kind of know that, but, like, I don't know, man. I think this word should make a, I think this word should make a comeback as well. All right, guys, and I am going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, the general point of this isn't for any other thing outside of just to really show no one is 100% fluent in a language. Um, again, I don't use the big capital F word when I talk about languages and stuff. However, just to get on people who get on their high horse about you're not fluent because you don't know what this piece in a car is. These are words, I, I am a native English speaker, and some of these sure are retired and stuff, but I've never heard of them at all, ever. Therefore, I guess technically by some people's standards, I'm not fluent in English, even though it's my native language. But... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do some research. Let me know down below if you find any words um, in your native language, whether it's English or any other thing like that. Definitely let me know. I am interested to know um, how that goes. Also, uh, this goes to show that even if you're native, you don't necessarily know how to pronounce everything correctly as I struggled. So, But guys, I am going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video.